Today, we're heading to standard to see if Koth Fire of Resistance might actually be good in a mono red Super Friends proliferate shell. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Sephrada, with it it's time for another edition of Much About, About Nothing, and we got a super fun one this week, we are heading to Standard to play Mono Red Proliferate, Mono Red Super Friends, I don't know exactly what to call this deck, but the other day I was playing some Standard on Arena, and I ran into an opponent who was trying to ultimate Koth super quickly by using Proliferate spells, like Volt Charge is the one that I I saw in the opponent's deck. We also have staff of completion, and the idea seemed really cool. So I decided I'm gonna try to build a version of this deck and see how it goes. And it ended up being super sweet, and that's what we're playing today. So let's talk about this deck really quick. Jump into some games, see the shenanigans in action. So the heart of our deck: three planeswalker, Chandra Dress to kill, Jaya Fiery Negotiator, and Koth Fire of Resistance. I know I mock this card really hard during spoiler season, but it's actually one of the best cards in this deck. It's still not a card that you can play in most decks, but in the right shell, it can actually be pretty powerful. So the idea of our deck, we have all these Planeswalkers, which act as removal. They all generate card advantage, and they all have more or less game-winning ultimates. Koff gives us like a super Valica, four damage whenever we play him out, and Jaya triples up our instants and sorceries. Chandra, if we get its emblem, every time we cast a red spell, we deal damage equal to the amount of mana that we spent to cast on it. So if we can ultimate any one of these Planeswalkers, it should win us the game over the course of a few turns. And we're really all in on trying to ultimate them with the help of Proliferate. We got Volt Charge to Proliferate. We got Staffy Completion to ramp and Proliferate and maybe sometimes draw a card. And this is why Koth is actually one of the best cards in our deck. It is the easiest Planeswalker to ultimate. It comes in with four loyalty. It can plus two up to six loyalty and it ultimates at seven, which means if we play in plus Koth, we only need one Proliferate spell. Either their staff or volt charge and we get to ultimate it the next turn and then we start playing our 15 mountains and just burning our opponent out of the game or shooting down their creatures so that's kind of the main idea of the deck we also got other stuff that likes counters a tablet of completion powers up quickly with proliferator fable the mirror breaker we can rush through all the lore counters the other key aspect of the deck is all will be one we saw this last weekend against the odds it's a really powerful finisher with planeswalkers like if we play all will be one and play a cough it's four damage then when we plus two it's two more damage then we proliferate and add a bunch of counters to things. It's a bunch more damage. So this is another way for us to close out the game. And that's really the idea of the deck. We also got a bunch of card draw, like Reckoner Bank Buster, Tablet of Completion, a bunch of removal spells, Light Up the Knights, probably the spiciest, because we can flash it back and remove loyalty counters to maybe use it to close out the game. A bunch of colorless lands, Mistress Foundry, Blast Zone, a bunch of mountains. And really, that's all we're trying to do with the deck. Planeswalker, Proliferate Value, Sideboard, pretty typical stuff, a bunch more removal, some unlicensers for graveyard decks, a Pithy Needle to deal with, opposing planeswalkers and that is mono red proliferate that's our much of brew deck for this week so let's jump into some games see if we can ultimate some planeswalkers see if we can get some sweet all will be one kills thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoy it and i'll be back in a bit for the wrap up need some Phyrexy all will be one cards well you can snag them from our sponsor card kingdom over at cardkingdom.com slash mtg goldfish much brew about nothing time. We are playing some mono red proliferate control in standard this week. And the sand actually looks kind of great. Very, very good. Uh, I mean, this is this is the curve. Bank buster into fable into cop. This is a cop deck. This is the best cop deck. If there was ever a deck where cop is going to be good, it is this one. I think we just fable of the Mia breaker. Running out Chandra into the shade seems kinda bad. No blocks. And <laughs> Graveyard Trespasser. I don't know if we actually want to discard any of these. These all seem pretty good. Yeah, let's keep everything. I'm very tempted to just chump attack and run out all will be one and set up for a big turn next turn. Hit you with a goblin. Mega Treasure. So we lose our Goblin. Yup. However, however, we get down all will be one. Pass the turn, and hopefully this just takes care of all of our problems. They can't kill it yet, right? They don't have Invoke to Spear Mana. Opponent land. They might be able to kill it eventually. Opponent gonna go attacking. 13. And Shieldred. We need to kill pretty much everything, so we draw. Oh my god, another one. 
We flip Fable, we get a damage. So hit the Shieldred. Flip the Saga. Play the Koth. Kill the Shieldred. Tick up the Koth. Kill the Shadow. Get a Mountain. Play the Mountain past the turn. Okay, that was huge. That was huge. Oh god, Frexine Obliterator. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to find a way to just straight up kill our opponent then. We cannot damage the Obliterator opponent. Drains us. No blocks. Can we live two turns? Double all will be one is kind of absurd. The problem is, what if they have Invoke Despair? Can we beat an Invoke Despair? Okay, so I think we, all right, play Chandra. Hit our opponent for three. Tick up Chandra. Hit our opponent for two. Play a land. Play Jaya. Hit our opponent for four. Take up Koth. Hit our opponent, get a mountain. Take up Jaya. Hit you to nine. And we pass the turn. Okay, as long as we survive this turn, we should, look at this board. Still a little concerned about Invoke Despair. Does that beat us? Oh, we're gonna live. We're gonna live and we're gonna win, I think. All right, so there's the Invoke Despair. A creature. An enchantment, Planeswalker. Oh, okay, take down Jaya. There we go, okay, there's a Koth. Four, five, six, so we can't play both, but we can play Koth. Play Koth, hit our opponent for four. Take down Koth on Graveyard Trespasser. Discard a Mountain. Mishra's Foundry, go. Come on, not another invoke. Not another invoke. Okay, Mishra's Foundry, yep. We're like a planeswalker away from lethal. A lot of draws. Bank Buster. Draws a Volt Charge and a Rebel Salvo. Obi-Wan, wow, this is like so close. Obliterator is obnoxious, golly. All right, let's draw with Bank Buster. Come on, that planeswalker. Rebel Salvo. Rebel Salvo is great against basically everything except Obliterator. All right, opponent untaps. Ooh, that gains two life. Okay, not ideal, not ideal. Volt charge our opponent. Hitchia to three. We need anything with counters. Bank Buster, Planeswalker. That's just a mountain. Um. Well, draw a card. Come on, Dak. Light up the night does it. That that does do it. So we can go X5. We beat an obliterator. We actually straight up beat an obliterator. They even evoked and spared us, and it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. That was a great game for our deck. I'm very afraid of obliterator, though. I mean, we've talked about this at length, but obliterator is great against mono red decks. It is pretty much just 5-5 five, five unblockable. Like, you can't, we can't interact with it. At least it doesn't seem like our opponent's playing fight spells, so that's a little bit of good news, but I guess we bring in more Rebel Salvos, probably. Maybe we go down, like, one tablet, one staff. That was an impressive game, though. We, like, kind of went off. We had, like, three Planeswalkers and all will be one on the battlefield at once, which is ridiculous. Ridiculous. I mean, we'll keep this. Having a lot of, uh, well, okay, not quite as much card draw. Having a lot of card draw is good, although our card draw is going to be diminished by a duress on a bank buster, I assume. I mean, how many obliterators can our opponent really be playing? Probably not that many. Do they let us keep a bank buster since we already have one and take a removal spell? They do. I mean, that's fine. I think bank buster is very good against our opponent's deck. A bonnet land and evolve sleep rise. The opponent wanted to do some sleeping. Uh, Mishra's foundry and... Yeah, I guess we just kill this. Yep. And level it up, it still dies. Light up the night, it's worded weirdly. It deals X plus one damage. So at two mana, it deals two damage and so forth. About it. Graveyard Trespasser. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Well, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Tempting to Rebel Salvo the Graveyard Trespasser, but. If our opponent plays Shieldred here, they play a Gix. Well, I mean, I guess you get to draw a card, unfortunately. Opponent hits us, draws a card. 
we will discard Chandra. Yeah, this feels bad, but I think we have to play a land. Get rid of the Gex. Omega Treasure. Hit ya. Get down a Bank Buster. Well, now I kind of regret discarding All Will Be One. <laughs> it might have actually ended up being good here. Soarin' the Merciless. Nope. And Abona goes attacking. Yup, down to 12. Hi. Well, flip the Saga, play the land. Crew the Bank Buster. All right, opponent is going to block. Boy, they love tapping these, love tapping these, uh, mountains. All right, Bank Buster number two past the turd. Kind of far behind here, though. We're always on the Invoke Despair Clock, found at Misery Shadow, and plays it. Oh, come on, not a Shieldred, not a Shieldred. Flesh Gorger, I mean, Flesh is also pretty good. Yeah, draw a card. Not the best time for Tablet of Completion. Trying to decide if they want to attack. Decides on no. Interesting. Koth is something. We only have two mountains, though. Maybe it's not as much as something as I was thinking. How do we avoid dying here? Play Blast Zone. Play... Tablet of Completion. This is bad. This is a bad spot. And yeah, pass the turn. Yeah, we gotta pass. Play some D. We had to play something to keep this Trespasser from flipping, but... This is still a bad spot, Pona taking up Soren. If they ever hit Invoke Despair, we're so dead. Liliana, that's also pretty bad, Pona. Liliana. I don't know how we get out of this. Uh, sack the Goblin. This is a lot of damage. Okay. Attacks. Pray for a miracle. Maybe we should have brought in the Sweeper. The Sweeper's bad against... Against Obliterator, but maybe our opponent doesn't have that many Obliterators. Draw Chandra. Bank Buster, draw a mountain. Drop to six. Play a mountain, play Koth. Kill the Graveyard Trespasser. Discard a mountain. Pass the turd, but I don't expect this to keep us alive. Found at land. Oh, now we're just straight up dead dead, right? Well, let's, uh... How many counters on Lily? One. All right, so draw with Bank Buster. I guess we gotta hit like Rebels Elvo. Blast Zone. All right, yep, 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 yep. Oh, so do we bring in Burn Down the House? Maybe it's worth it. Yeah, let's bring it in. Ah, oh, it's so bad against Obliterator, but it might still just be worth it. Go down the Abrades, maybe? Game three, we're on the play. We just gotta keep from getting so far behind. Like, that game, we just got, we got out on a very slow first step. All right, we'll try it. We got the burn down the house. See if we get duress into Oblivion. We got all will be one too. All be one is really good if we can get it down and it doesn't invoke despaired. Mountain go. Abunit. Schwamp and Evolve Sleeper. No tablet of completion. Take her up. Wouldn't mind hitting something that proliferates for the sake of this tablet. Abunit it gets and hits us. Are we pumping? Yes. Do we play the Chandra? Probably not. Yeah, let's just pass. I think our plan is, depending on what our opponent does, either ramping into all will be one or ramping into burn down the house. If our opponent plays something else we need to kill, then it's probably burn down the house. Flesh Gorger. Well, oil it up. I mean, we could just play the all will be one still. Yeah, let's, we'll drop to what, 11? You know what? I think we're going to. The risk of this plan is if our opponent plays Obliterator here, we are dead. We're hoping they play Shielder. If they play Shielder, life is great. If they play Obliterator, it is just GG's, because then we can't burn down the house. Come on. All right, Liliana, that's fine. That is fine. That does not ruin our day in the least. We'll discard a Blast Zone. Opponent discards a Swamp. Opponent passes. Blast Zone hits you for one. Invoke Despair would still be obnoxious. So opponent gets pinged. I mean, we could deal with everything without burning down the house. Is that better? Yeah, I think we just burned down the house. All right, burn down the house. Sweep and pass the turn. Hopefully, no invoke despair. Okay, that's that's fine. 
That is fine. So ping ya. We get drained once, but we have answers. We have answers for this. So we drop to nine. Play cough. Hit shielder for four. Take up goth. Hit our opponent for two. Get a mountain. Oil up tablet of completion. Kill the shieldred. Play the land and pass the turn. Okay. Do you have invoke despair? All right, that's it's not invoke despair, so we can deal with that. We can deal with that. Ooh, there goes our Chandra though. That's annoying. Yeah, I mean, I guess we're I guess we're devil <laughs> devil tribal now. Hit ya, play the mountain, pass the turn. Next turn we get to start drawing with tablet, which is nice. Bank Busta, sure. And we can deal decent damage with Blast Zone. The Chandra would have been nice, but we're not in bad shape here. A bonus pass as well. Oil counter on tablet, hit ya. Untap. Draw with tablet. The Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Ping ya. We're also building up the the right permanent types to not get as wrecked by Invoke Despair, which is nice. Holding onto the land for Fable. Okay, there's the Invoke, but this could have been way worse. So we sack a Devil, we sack Fable, we take two. Opponent gets pinged. We're like a draw away from winning here. Charge up Blast Zone. Can we win without drawing anything? So hit you to nine. Six, seven, eight. We're one damage short of lethal, but this makes one. So we can hit for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, Mistress Foundry. Go to combat attack. Get a treasure. Add four counters to Blast Zone for four damage. And then. Tablet of completion. <laughs> ah, to complete the victory. Through the invokes, showing off the synergies. This deck's kind of sweet. Tablet of completion, not good for every deck, but in the right deck, that card's actually pretty good. Well, sweet, sweet, that was a good one. Much more about nothing time. We are playing some mono red proliferate in standard and no big uh, planeswalker payoffs, but we got staff. Ooh, soldiers, all right. I don't know how Soldiers is gonna go in game one. After sideboarding, we get a bunch of sweepers, which should be helpful, but it's in for two. Aggro curve out on the play. Going to be tricky in game one. Land and the Denic system. Play a mountain. Tablet of completion. And tick it up. And hits us. Gonna need to draw some removal very soon. Oh God, incredibly soon. All right, Rebel Salvo, that is that is removal. Oh, so we kill the Harbin, I guess, and just see what happens? Yeah, play a mountain. We gotta kill the Harbin. Take up the tablet. Pass the turn. Yeah, it's a lot of damage. A bonus land. Smacks us for six. Uh-huh. Passes, oh, another staff of completion. I'll play blast zone. I think we actually have to blast zone here. It's kind of painful, but, oh, not the flash soldier. All right, opponent, what do they find? Yeah, this is this is where staff looks so bad. There's matchups where it looks very good. This is not one of them. Oh, I guess we should have done this. Yeah, I guess we should have done this before frontliner attack. That was a, that cost us a damage. Seems unlikely that that's gonna matter in the end, but. In some, uh, some matchups that will actually matter. I'll take up the tablet. About it, hits us to five. There's the Thalia. And dead. That's that's what we expect to happen against soldiers. If we run into a deck like soldiers, we expect to get kind of smacked in game one, but then we get to bring in Burn Down the House, Brothers Hood End, A Braid, Strangle. Uh, so we get a ton of cheap removal. We get to trim, well, I actually just cut staff. Staff is, uh, staff is a bit, a bit janky in this matchup. Just we can't afford to spend life on it. 
Triminol will be one. Trimajaya. Maybe a Rebel Salvo. Maybe both Rebel Salvos. We don't really need expensive removal to kill big things. Yeah, one more tablet. Run it like that. All right, let's see. Let's see if the sideboard plan's enough. A timely sweeper can uh, swing the match up against a deck like Soldiers. Well, we get to play first. Yeah, we'll keep this. Strangle the first threat. We got a Fable. We got a Planeswalker. Well, Mountain Goo. Skrull. Not a soldier. I think that's cheating. Well, kill the Skrull. Pass the turn. Thalia would be obnoxious. Thalia means we do nothing next turn. Passing. Okay, that's that's good news. Mishra's Foundry. Fable of the Mia Brega. All right, opponent resolute reinforcements. Sure. I mean, we should be able to kill pretty much whatever our opponent plays. All right, runs out the Sky Strike Officer. Are we attacking? Well, probably not. No attacks. Now, loot away a Blast Zone. And a Soken Zen? Yeah, I think we do. Loot, loot. Play a Mountain. Volt Charge. It would have been sweet if we could have got it down a Planeswalker first, but. Uh, all right, counters on both. Flip the saga. Get a treasure with their goblin. I mean, this is going a lot better than game one, that's for sure. You can do it, Goth. All right. Annoying, but not deadly. We have enough mana we can still cast our stuff and a front liner. Passes. Play the mountain. I guess Jaya's better. Let's play Jaya. Negative two Jaya. Targeting Thalia. Hit you with the goblin. Get a treasure kill the Thalia. And this frees our braid as well. Are we blocking? Alright, opponent's gonna double block. Sure. We're not gonna we're not gonna spend an abrade here. Pass the turn. One mind keeping Jaya around. A token every turn is kinda nice. And our proliferate stuff gets way better with a planeswalker. Although we do have we do have cough. Well, I think we've mostly stabilized this game. It feels like, unless they have Kaya's reconstruction or something. Alright, sure. Fires up the foundry. Well, let's see how our opponent attacks. If they get greedy, we might be able to keep the Jaya. Jaya. So opponent pumps. I think we try to do it. Opponent could have like a spell pierce, I guess. Kill the foundry. Jaya lives. Board is clear. Koth coming down. Uh, well, take up Jaya, make a monk. Play a Koth. Take up Koth for a mountain. Mishra's Foundry. Ooh, two Planeswalkers on an empty board. This is where all will be won. Oh, all will be won would seal the deal. Sky Strike Officer. Mm -hmm. And another front liner. Found it passes. I mean, I guess we just. Yeah, take down. Kill the Sky Strike Officer. Take up Jaya for a monk. Go on. Impress me. Fire up a Foundry. Hit you for two. An opponent, okay. We can be soldiers. We didn't even draw our sweepers. I mean, we did bring in more removal, which helped. But we didn't even draw any sweepers that game. We just, we just kind of picked them apart with Planeswalkers. Oh, I was so harsh on Koth during spoiler season two. It does sort of do things. And it is really good if you have all will be one. Like that's the real payoff, I think. On a game three, soldiers on the play. Oh, this hand. We need red, we need red mana. If we hit red mana, this hand is everything we could want in the matchup. We got the sweeper, we got double strangle. It is literally everything. The problem is, oh, the problem is we only have colorless lands. We do have a lot of colorless lands in the deck. We have way more mountains in colorless lands, but we do have a lot of colorless lands. Pona gets and hits us. This is kind of like a one land keep. Oh no. I guess it's kind of like a zero land keep, honestly. Oh no, opponent, foundry. And another recruitment officer. And opponent passes. And we scoop it up. 
Well, I know I'm going to get yelled at for that. I actually think there's a pretty strong argument for keeping this hand. I think our opponent's deck on the play is a, is a tough matchup. In this hand, with a red source, is a, literally our ideal draw. Like, it doesn't get any better in this matchup than two Strangles of Brothers of Den and two, uh, two Fable of the Mirror Breakers. Let's math it to justify our, our bad decisions. So if we go to our deck list, I mean, we can figure out, like, exactly exactly what our chances are that is the power that is the power of the hyper geometric calculator 16 red sources so we have 53 cards in our deck 16 of them essentially win us the game let's say we have two turns to draw it we need to hit one of them how how bad are our odds i guess it was roughly 50 50. it was like 50 50 that we'd hit a red source in our first two draws so by turn two uh, if we go to like turn three up to 66 if we go to turn four Four, so two thirds of the time, essentially. Turn four, pretty close to 80. Let me know what you think. So basically, we had a coin flips chance of winning the game. A coin is a 51% chance of winning the game, better than our odds of beating soldiers with them being on the play with a six card hand. I would say that our opponent is favored on the play in that matchup, uh, most likely. I, I think mathematically it favors that keep. I'm sure, I'm sure I'm getting yelled at and I will not blame you at all for yelling about it, but I don't know. No, I think strictly mathematically speaking, I think our odds of winning are higher keeping that hand than going to six, but I don't know. Let's play another one. Much brew by nothing time. We are playing some mono red proliferate super friends, mid range control. I don't know. Mono red proliferate stuff. And uh, eh, we got a lot of proliferate. We got the all will be one. We got our, uh, our buddy cough here. And another mountain's fine. We did need another red source at some point. Ooh. Spirited Companion. Land go. Opponent hits us for one. Angelic Overseer. All right, so opponent's angels. I mean, I think we probably are supposed to... I think we're probably supposed to Volt Charge this. Add a counter. Uh, play him out in Jaya make a token so we know our opponent's gonna have some big flyers coming can the answer all will be one fable of a mia breaker i mean this is a pretty easy trade we will block the spirited companion i'll play a land all will be one take up the jaya ping our opponent all right, past the turn. I mean, if we get to untap here, life is pretty sweet. If our opponent can ramp into like something huge, that could be a problem. If then kill all will be one, we're gonna be sad. All will be one is necessary for the sweetness. Bona gets in, attacks the Jaya. We will jump. Sanctuary Warden. Ooh, just okay. Spirited Companion. That's that is acceptable. That is definitely acceptable. Restoration of a Jano. Okay. Oh, uh, maybe our opponent's trying to reanimate. Well, this is kind of good for us. So, this ultimate's at eight. Let's play Chandra. Play Chandra. Hit you for three. Take up Chandra. Hit you for one. Hit the Spirited Companion. Take up Jaya. Hit you for one. Play a Mountain, play a Koth. Hit you for four. Take up Koth. Kill your goblin. Wow, what a what a turd. What a turd. Pass the turd. About it. Okay, just discards a plane. That's fine. I was afraid they were gonna be discarding a Troxer or something and invoke Justice Thing, but looks like our opponent's playing fairly. All right, flips a reflection. I mean, at this point, even if our opponent blows up all will be one, there's a good chance we can ultimate multiple planeswalkers, which is kind of ridiculous. If they can't kill all will be one, there's a good chance that we just straight up win. They might need like Archangel of Wrath, I guess, to just gain a little life. Can our opponent find a way out of this? Seems unlikely. Blade Coil Serpent. I was not expecting that. Opponent makes us discard our hand, gets a hasty trampler. This does make things a lot worse. We will chump to keep it alive. Koth goes to one. We end, oh my God, that's a staff of completion. Okay. One, two, three. 
Actually, all right, let's think about this. Let's think about this. So we take up Koth. Can we kill our opponent? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I believe so. All right, so I think this just works. So we take up Koth. I think we have exactly 11, 11 damage, if I'm not counting this wrong. Hit you to nine. Get a mountain. Take up Chandra. Hit you for two, thanks to all will be one. Down to seven. Take up Jaya. Ping you for one, make a monk. Play the land, play Staff of Completion. Proliferate with Staff of Completion. Hit you for one five times. Wow, what a what an impressive performance. Ping, 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 ping. And then, last but not least, put a charge counter on the blast zone, I say. Char charge her up. Oh, what a game. What a game. Wow, that was so sweet. This deck is really cool. Are they reanimating? Do we want unlicensed turses? I'm confused. Our opponent looks like an angel deck, but then they play Blade Coil Serpent. They got Restoration of Ajana, which you mostly see in reanimation decks because it lets you get something in the graveyard. I'm not sure what we're fighting against here, honestly. So Burn Down the House and Rebel Salvo seem good at a minimum. We can probably go down like their early game doesn't look that great. Go down like a couple strangles, a tablet of completion. Like they're playing Spirited Companion and so forth. They're not playing cards that are likely to just straight up run us over. Also, shout out to uh, Staff of Completion. That was that was key to the win. I think this is the best Staff of Completion deck I've played so far. Do we go down an all will be one? We gotta cut one more of something. Our three drop prize game. You know what? Let's go down a Chandra. That's fine. Chandra on the on the draw. Worse than Chandra on the play. Get him, Koth. This hand, well, we need to hit a land, but that's that's fine. Assuming we hit a land, or kind of two, we can kill stuff and play Planeswalkers, which basically what our deck wants to do. Also got the, the Valentine's Day sleeves going, still forgot to change them. About it. Wow, going to five? Oh boy, this hand, okay. As long as we hit a land, this hand is amazing. All right, that's a land. That's a land, that's what we wanted to see. About it. Passing, well, we will play a land Honestly, I think we just Fable here. Fable mostly ensures that we hit a land next turn. Oh, poor opponent. Discard a Jaya, discard a Rebel Salvo. We have almost too many riches at this point. Get in, hit you, make a treasure, play a Koth. Hit our land drop. I mean, last game was really sweet. This game, we just feel bad that our opponent's not doing anything. All right, Fable the Mirror Breaker. So our opponent, they might be able to play a little bit, but they are a smidge behind. Oh wait, they're, I think they're dead now. Attack you, make a treasure. I mean, we just get to ultimate Koth, right? Play Chandra, tick it up, ping you. And then Volt Charge. Proliferate. Emblem Koth. So now every mountain is four damage, which, I mean, we're gonna hit mountains eventually. We don't have any lands in hand, but we will draw mountains. There's 11 left in our deck. So all we gotta do is basically stay alive and this Koth Emblem should win us the game. We can even use Jaya just to like dig for mountains at this point. Uh, wow, discards a fate. Hmm, how can our opponent's hand be missing land drops and so, well, okay, they're hitting their lands. I guess that makes sense. I mean, we gotta assume our opponent has some really good cards in hand because we know they don't have any lands. So it's gotta be all action, I would think. Brotherhood end. Well, take up Chandra Pena. A Jaya. Take up Jaya, make a token. Mishra's Foundry, Staff of Completion. Add a counter. Yo, opponent gets their saga. Black Cleave Cliffs. Is there any way our opponent can stay in this game? Do they have any hope? Oh, there's a Silex. We don't actually have an answer for that, do we? So that's gonna destroy everything? That gives our opponent a shot here, actually. Well, take up Chandra, ping you. Take down Jaya. Okay, there's a mountain. Play the mountain, hit you for four. Salvo the reflection. Mishra's foundry. Okay. I mean, so our opponent can wrath with Urza Silex and maybe tutor up a planeswalker. We're a mountain away from, Le wow, okay. Opponent's just gonna sweep that way. Sure. 
Well, there goes all of our fun stuff. Take up the tablet. We're at 20. Yeah, staff of completion. <laughs> Pay for draw a mountain. Ooh, a Koth. That's a, that's a, oh, that actually is a mountain. All right, play a Koth. Koth, Koth coming through. Take up, grab a mountain. And for ya. Yeah, this Koth Emblem's gonna just carry this game. Opponents to one. The Emblem actually is very powerful. It actually is very powerful. It is hard to lose once once your lands deal four damage with their ETB. And now I think we just got him. Like, you can Wrath if you want, but that doesn't do it. Ooh, Shieldred. That also doesn't do it. Fable of the Mia Brega. Okay. I mean, don't we just get a mountain and play it and win? I guess our opponent's hoping we're out of mountains, but we are not. <laughs> An opponent! Well, in that game, we benefited a little bit, or a lot, from our opponent missing those land drops. Like, that did not help. Our opponent did manage to catch up, but once you fall behind like that, it's it's tough. Game one, though, we got to see the the trinity of planeswalkers we had all three mono red planeswalker tron assembled and the shenanigans so that was a, that was a good match that was a good one much more about nothing time we are playing some mono red proliferate and we have learned nothing we are keeping the no red mana hand actually the difference the difference here is it's the no ma red mana hand Ooh. All right, now we have red mana. Uh, the difference was Reckoner Bankbuster, honestly. That was uh, that was the card that changes things. Well, it should be interesting. Opponent's going aggro. Katilda. Opponent gets in for one. We would like to just fable the Mirror Breaker. Letting our opponent untap with Katilda seems bad, though. Missing our land drop next turn also feels bad, though. I mean, how bad? How bad could it be if our opponent untaps with five? Yeah, I guess it's it's probably pretty bad. All right, we're gonna kill Katilda. I actually don't think we want to proliferate in this matchup on Bankbuster. In control matchups, a lot of times we do. Against aggro, though. Oh, all right, land, 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 land. Okay, we we have some colorless lands. We've learned. Well, Fable the Mia Rega. Opponent is not going to be poisoned. <laughs> Defense. Well, I'm glad we killed Katilda. If our opponent doesn't have a land drop, killing Katilda definitely worked out. Although we're still kind of in an awkward position. Opponent attacks, pumps, and oh, another Katilda. Okay. Well, opponent passes. I mean, we can kill it with Koth. Discard a Chandra. Discard a Koth. Play the mountain. Play Koth. Koth is like the sneaky all-star in this deck. Koth. Kill Katilda. If opponent sacks Malyra, that's fine. Because we also have a braid to kill Katilda. Threats dealt with. Opponent can attack the Koth and kill the Koth, but that's fine. That is fine. Opponent hits a land. Uh, but Rutel Kitha. Sure. Well, flip the saga. Play the cough. Play the mountain. Strangle the hopeful initiate. Pass the turn. Opponent's got five cards in hand. That is a concern. On the other hand, it's like turn seven or something, and we're at 13 against aggro. Brutal Cathar. Well, this is actually probably good for us. We can actually just take down Koth and get back our Fable. That actually seems really good. Uh, Koth, kill the Brutal Cathar. Get back Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Draw a card with Bank Buster. Yeah, play another Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And yeah, I guess another Foundry past the turn. All right, opponent, your go. Is Koth actually, is Koth actually good? I can't believe I'm saying these words, but is Koth actually good? I think that, strangely, it's limited. You gotta be a deck like this. You gotta have a lot of mountains, and you gotta have the synergies. You gotta have the all will be one, but uh, I don't know. In the right deck, I think it's actually, actually a pretty good card. I have changed my tune, and that makes me happy because I love Koth as a character. Koth has been one of my favorite Planeswalkers for a long time. I thought this version was gonna be a bust, but in this deck, it's actually, one of our best cards. So bringing sweepers, you know what? We'll cut the tab. Well, actually, let's 
Let's keep one tablet going, Chandra. We're running it like that. Anger on the play. Can we beat it? I feel like uh, our matchup should improve. Just the fact that we have sweepers now should make the matchup better for us. We'll see if it plays out that way. Well, we'll try this. Not the fastest start, but we do have some volt charges. Hopeful initiate. Plaza of Heroes hits us. Hopeful initiate. Well, play the land, pay the, play the bank buster past the turn. Burn down the house should do some work eventually. Lou, Lauren, all right. Not good, not good. A bone, it hits us down to 17. Yeah, play Mishra's Foundry past the turn. Yeah, I guess we're gonna have to Volt Charge the Lauren? We don't really want our opponent to start putting counters on the Hopeful Initiates. Uh, yeah, kill the Lauren. I mean, if they want to Zack Plaza of Heroes, that's fine. Ooh, Valorous Stance, all right. Oh, they keep the Lauren. The initiates grow. Down to 11. Ugh. Ugh, 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 ugh. I mean, I guess we just fable. I think our game plan is burn down the house. Like, we're playing to get to this burn down the house. I think fable's our best bet. That either gives us the treasure or the looting, and hopefully one of those gets us a land. Now we're kind of hoping our opponent plays more creatures. And, all right, blows it up. Now well, we hit the land and, ooh, now we actually have options. These don't grow each other. I mean, maybe we wait. Yeah, let's play Giant Mega 1-1. One, one. And pass the turn. Opponent adapts. Yeah, maybe we don't even have to burn down the house yet. With the counters being removed, like, these are not as scary, especially with no other creatures on the battlefield. And if our stuff sticks next turn, we can Chandra and Volt Charge and double proliferate Planeswalkers. Both at Jaya. Sure. We'll take it. And... Ooh, Adeline. Well, we'll untap. Opponent could have Valorous Stance to save Adeline. That would be... That would be less than ideal. And that's gonna grow the Hopeful Initiates. One, two, three. Play Chandra. Trigger Prowess. Take up Chandra, ping you. Volt Charge a Hopeful Initiate. Add counters. Jaya make a Monk past the turn. The awkward part about this is the burn down the house does hit planeswalkers. As we burn down the house, we're also gonna be burning down two of our own planeswalkers. Might be able to avoid it. There might be a chance that we can get the loyalty high enough that they just barely survive. Opponent, attacking face. Gonna ignore the planeswalkers. Well, I mean, we will block and we will block. Kill the token up to five. Opponent passes. Take up Chandra for a card. Strangle Hopeful Initiate. Make a Monk. Well, now I guess we'd make Devils? Yeah, let's just make some Devils. I mean, we're getting a lot of loyalty. Oh, if we can hit a Proliferate spell. Oh, we're a Proliferate spell away from doing some ultimating. Opponent. Ooh, Steel Seraph, okay. Thankfully not full priced. Oh, wait, that gets flying? Oh, no. Okay. Well, I was not expecting Steel Seraph. So now we might be dead. That might have been a mistake. Ooh, now we have to hit multiple removal spells. Oh, that's a strangle. I mean, if we can kill the Seraph, we're stable-ish, right? But what if they have Valorous Stance? I feel like we need one more removal. Ooh. What do we do about Valorous Stance, though? That's the issue. Let's take down Jaya for cards. Strangle the Seraph. Light up the night, Adeline. Hit you for one? Wow, they didn't have any protection. Oh, I thought for sure we were gonna lose there. I mean, that's Planeswalker power. Just dig and dig and dig. And now we get to ultimate Chandra if we want to. Wow. That Steel Seraph almost got us. About it. I guess they named Bankbuster since we have one. Although Bankbuster is not doing, I mean, it's good. Card draw is always good, but it's not doing anything immediately. All right, gonna slow down our Mishra's Foundry. Nah, that makes sense. And a Katilda. Yeah, I mean, we're not gonna pass up a chance to ultimate a Planeswalker. Chandra ultimate. Play a Koth. Shoot down the Peacekeeper. Take up Koth for a mountain, this one's over. This one is over, get a mountain. 
a brain Catilda hit your face. And yeah, that's the GG's, that's the GG's. And that is Proliferate Mono Red Planeswalker Power. This deck is sweet. Well, that was a good one, sweet, sweet. Much brew about nothing time. We are playing some Mono Red Proliferate Super Friends in Standard. Sounds fine. Fable the Mirror Breaker, Planeswalker. No proliferate, but that's that's a, a reasonable Magic the Gathering hand. What are you up to, opponent? Ooh, Celestia, eh? Well, land, go. Green, white. Okay, so it's gonna be toxic. The, the infamous toxic deck. Can we beat toxic? Well, kill the abrade, or abrade the, the toxic dork. Fable of the Mia Breaker. Pass the turn. I'm actually curious how our deck lines up against what our opponent's doing. Viral spawning. Well, loot away Rebel Salvo. Chandra. Yeah, let's strangle the token. Play Mishra's Foundry. <laughs> we do occasionally get draws where we draw a few too many colorless lands. Koth should be able to fix this in the future though. Koth, our savior, can actually find his mountains. Tap land. All right, there's the hive. Now we get to untap. We draw a mountain. We flip the saga. We hit you with a goblin. We make a treasure. Mountain. Cough. Take it up for a mountain. We should be able to just ultimate cough, right? And that should, that should ruin our opponent's day, I think. The sage use the reflection, sure. Another hive. We're gonna need to blast them. That uh, those. Okay, so I think. Wow, this is actually insane. Actually, no. Let's just go face. Do some proliferating. Emblem cock. Hit ya. And opponent scoops it up. Okay. Proliferate, no match. All right, brothers had ended. The blast zone was gonna be clutch. That's our one answer to Skrelf's hive. Now let's just bring the sweepers, go down, tablet of completion, maybe one staff of completion, and we probably just need more cheap removal. Let's go down to all will be one. Let's go to one Jaya, go up two strangles, run it like that. All right, let's just do that again. The quick Koth ultimate, I think is the best thing our deck can do. I mean, the all will be one late game is like ridiculous, but the just like Koth uptick proliferate ultimate, that is pretty good against basically any deck. Like once our mountains are dealing four damage, it becomes really hard to lose. Like worst case, well, okay, Rot Priest. That means we are actually gonna get a poison counter this game. Kill the Rot Priest. Hopefully they don't follow this up with Skrelv's Hive. All right, Slaughter Stinger. Well, in that case, we will also kill that. Removal, good. Removal, helpful against decks like this. Crawling Chorus. Well, land and Fable of the Mia Brega. Go. Opponent passing. Yeah, we'll discard the bank buster, I guess. Hit you with a goblin. Mega treasure. And yeah, I think we just run out Koth. Start hitting our mountains. Koth has impressed me. Koth has impressed me. I I still think it's a limited planeswalker in terms of what, wow, they didn't even make a token, in terms of what decks you can put it in, but it's actually pretty sweet in the right deck. Opponent hitting the Koth. Yeah, after getting ultimated last game, opponents got the, they got the fear. Wow, doesn't even bother to try and we crushed them. And this deck's actually sweet. The deck's actually sweet. Toxic, no problem, can keep up with control. It's just like a really solid deck overall. Yeah, yeah sweet, mono red proliferate friends. Got him. So what did we learn this week about mono red proliferate in Phyrexia all will be one standard and the deck worked pretty well. Uh, all in all, since I built the most recent version of the deck, we can pull up some, uh, some stats here on untapped GG. Uh, five and three, 63% match win percentage. Pretty reasonable win rate, I think, for a pretty spicy deck. And I gotta say, 
the deck's just super fun to play. We do occasionally struggle with aggro. We can get run over, especially before sideboarding. Once we bring in the sweepers from the sideboard, it gets a little bit easier. The burn down the houses and brotherhoods then. But this deck can grind really well. And we just have some spectacular, like super flashy kills with this deck. We got to see all three Planeswalkers on the battlefield together. We got to see Koth ultimating and winning games. We got to see Chandra and Jaya ultimating and winning games. We got to see All Will Be One just going off. We got to see Staffa Completion actually be super, super good. Staffa Completion actually was very strong in this deck. It's another card that's kind of hard to use, but the three life to proliferate, if your goal is to ultimate Koth and ultimate Jaya and ultimate Chandra, is actually really effective. And it works really well with this strategy because red doesn't get that much proliferate. We got Volt Charge. Beyond that, there's not a lot of good options or really many options, period, to proliferate in a mono red deck. So the deck's super fun. Like, it doesn't feel like a red deck. When you think of red, you think of like super aggro, trying to burn you out, trying to attack with one drops. This is basically mono red control or mono red mid range. It does not play like your typical red deck. It kind of plays like a control deck or maybe a mid range deck, or even in some ways, a little bit of a combo deck mixed in, but it is really spectacular. So if you're looking for something different to do at standard, I would definitely recommend it. And I gotta, I gotta give a shout out to Koth. Like I know I was really hard on this card during spoiler season, and it's still a Planeswalker that doesn't go in most decks, but in this deck in specific, the card is actually just legitimately good. It is so good with the proliferate spells. Getting the mountains is actually kind of helpful because we got all these colorless lands, so the mana fixing is good. And even the removal mode is like occasionally relevant, although really it's mostly that it's just this really high, easy to ultimate Planeswalker that works well with all will be one and our proliferate effects. But in this deck, at least, Koth, actually a real magic card that is not just playable, but actually straight up good. So anyway, that is Mono Red Proliferate. That's been our much approved for this week. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon.